Today is Redstone Day, so in today's episode we are going to build a crazy over the top powerful super smelter with 128 furnaces running at the same time. This thing is so insanely fast that we end up having to build its own farm for fuel, an automated bamboo farm as well. Totally not planned, but yeah, it's what we end up having to do and it's very promising. We won't get to any building today, only the redstone, but this alone is an insane project. <laughs> You're beginning today's episode in Bamboo Bay, where Astro built a wishing well and asked everyone to well <laughs> make a wish in his wishing well. Let's see how this uh, how how this is this uh, loud. How does it work? This is fairly noisy. You may want to turn it. Yeah, yeah. Better, better. So how does this work? Throw your bamboo wish here. Bamboo. Oh, so I guess I name a bamboo with my wish and then throw it in. Wishing for a vegan shop. Vira, how do you spell wishing? Without the H, okay? Okay. Alrighty, we have our wish. Let's uh, throw it in and see. I guess it's just making its way through there with the other wishes and maybe Astro will pick one. I haven't seen his last episode yet, so I'm excited for this. Two days later. Like actually, literally two days. I have waited a little time for YouTube. What is... what? I just got home and my, my dear, oh my dearest virus. Oh my, you, you, you shouldn't have. Here's a token of grateful wishing. Use this token at the veggie bar in town, all free. What? What? <laughs> it is like, I think two days since I threw the thing in the thing with the, what, what you, what you literally just saw and it's already done. Astro, that's amazing. <laughs> we'll definitely have to check this out. But in between episodes, I did a live stream and I did this. Ah, uh ha! -huh. I found over a stack of netherite scrap that we will now turn into netherite ingots. Wait, I think that is way too little gold. Alrighty. 19 netherite ingots. If you think that doesn't sound like a lot, it freaking is. We can have a block of netherite and still do all our tools and all our armor. That's insane. Upgrade station. Welcome to iCraft again. I, I, I lost the other one in the stream and I, yeah, Casper was good enough to give me all the stuff to make a new one. There you go. A netherite pick and a lucky digger. Another netherite mending pick. This is insane. Can we make a bow out of this? <laughs> no. As far as armor goes, my shoes are great. Maybe. Uh, you know what? Why not? Why not? I have so many of these and I am so excited for it. And the shoes look fantastic. And now I look fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, all, all these, oh, these are just my netherite shoes. Oh, I didn't know he would notice them. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, honestly, I'm super excited for this. I have a lot of digging to do because it is turning nighttime. Sleep, 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 into our super smelter room. I started designing stuff in a creative test world. It's been a while since I planned a big redstone project and this will be the room for it. I started digging. Ah, pity. I thought maybe. There you go. <laughs> Seeing how much I know about the nether update. Not a lot. I thought maybe this pick would be even faster than a diamond one but it feels the same but not too very it should be super sturdy it has mending i can just dig away now i'll dig out a huge huge room and then i will we won't do a time lapse of that you've seen me dig out so many rooms i'll see you when i'm done here okay 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 let's drop everything here in this beautifully square room because i've asked in the how's that thing called discord in the discord server if there would maybe be a shop selling beacons in town and all of a sudden everybody and their dog seems to want a beacon and apparently there is one left and, and a DIY kit which I'm not sure what it is but I want it and I want it now. So I was told that Hat Trip has the nether shop which I've seen before but I haven't really explored it. It should be... Yeah, yeah, there it is. I, I saw it and I like it a lot. It's like your own little <laughs> nether portal in the overworld. So beacons, huh? Beacons. Hoo, 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 32 diamonds. 
each and there's exactly one that in my inventory is full of quartz it would be 30 to diamonds huh? <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> well that doesn't leave me with very much left but I think it's gonna be worth it because I have a lot of digging to do oh that's a DIY <laughs> I get it I get it <laughs> if you can DIY it yeah smart oh my goodness how did I ever live without this hog Okay, the basic shape of the room is done. We'll do a lot to this, but this is about the size I think I need in order to make it look good. Had a kind of a slopey thing going on right there, because this is the end of the mountain, but this doesn't matter, I think. But all of this digging got me very, very hungry. And I'm kind of tired of just eating bread, so let's check out Astro's shop. I'm super excited. Gotta grab my voucher. Is that a word? Voucher? I think. Now I need to find this shop. This is Astro's furnace shop where he's selling kelp blocks, so maybe it's around here? This is something very special. How did you guys get in there? And what is happening to you? <laughs> sure, do that. <gasps> there we go! <laughs> oh, nice! I seen Astro making a video on this. I haven't checked it, I wanted to be surprised. There's a bee in there! But he used the new nether... Whoa! The things, that thing, and I love the sign. I'm excited. Let's uh, be quick so the bee doesn't escape. Hello, Mr. Bee. Your bum is full of pollen. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're supposed to be in here. You're not named or anything. Hi. Hi. Are there any signs? Like, how do I, how do I, how do I pay? I mean, I do have a voucher, but <laughs> I love the bee in here. <laughs> oh, he has music in here. Okay, Astro, let me know if I'm doing something wrong. I will leave the voucher here and it said I could take whatever right so i'm gonna take a few carrots because i actually don't have any i'm gonna take beetroot and then for food i'm gonna take a stack of baked potatoes is that okay let me know if i'm doing anything wrong here but thanks for making my wish come true i love this shop it's amazing i just repaired some of my tools at the gold farm and when i come back i stumble upon luke catching his first guy for an automated bartering system i'm excited for this bartering is such a cool new mechanic all right now i should have everything ready i need to get this started and the room design will change drastically it'll be a lot of blackstone but for today i want to get the functionality of this smelter done and the design we can do later on now what i want for this farm is for it to be super efficient actually crazy over the top efficient we will use one double chest as the input and that will fuel 128 <laughs> furnaces which yes <laughs> absolutely over the top since this needs to be rather fast we will use hopper minecarts in order to split the items from this chests equally into the four distribution lines that will run over our furnaces and if that doesn't make sense just yet just you wait i'm building it i'll show you okay attempt number five of me trying to explain what I have built here. I tried to go through it step by step, but oof, it's confusing. I might do a tutorial about it. I'm sure I'm not the first one who came up with a design like this. This is my splitter, who splits the input of one chest into four hopper minecart lanes. Two on this side and two on this side. And the important thing is that it does it without hopper, so it does it at hopper minecart speed, the fastest we can possibly get. Now, when you see most super smelter designs, they have something like this here as well. These will be retracted by stinky pistons and the hopper minecarts would be set uh, there, taking out from whatever is on top of this. This upper minecart is situated in between these blocks. So both of these here, never mind what this guy is doing there, the right and the left one can take out of this guy at the same time. But if I would put them there, let me show you what happens. I put in 60 blocks right here. They go out super quickly. And in this guy, we have zero. While in this guy, we have 30. So they don't get distributed evenly, even though both of these can take out of this. Because if I put 60 right in there, you will see that we have 30 here and 30 there. So the problem is timing. We cannot have these guys sitting down there and taking out of this minecart while it is still being filled. It needs to have at least one stick in it already before we can put these guys there. And I keep forgetting that I have to recraft them every time I break them. This is painful. So this is why they sit in front of here. We will use comparators on these detector rails here, detecting whenever an item is in there. There you go. Then we will start a timer that will hopefully allow exactly 64 items to pass from one hopper minecart 
to the next. Then we will retract these. Hopper minecarts will move from here into their position under there and start taking stuff out. And then the timer will go again and release the cards back onto Turek. This way we can evenly split whatever we put in here among the four distribution lines. In order to make sure that it doesn't matter which side of our system is triggered, because in case we only put one item in or an odd number of it, Mm -hmm. then only one of these detection sites would trigger. So in order to take care of this problem, we just mirror our starting mechanism for our timer for both sides. And this is all there is to it. Just an observer pointing into the comparator, quick triggering a piston. So whenever something goes into this, which both of them should have triggered. Why don't... Oh, because there's still items in here. Yeah, once they trigger, they leave the redstone blocks behind. So right here, we can just detect, aha, uh -huh, something is in the system. And as soon as we take it out of the system, which our hopper minecarts down below will do, these will retract and it will be in the off state. Now, I actually need one of the new 1.16 blocks, the target block. I actually have no idea how to craft it. I think it is hay bales and redstone guessing. Hay bales? No, no, there's apparently more to it. No, that's just... Oh, I don't have enough redstone. There you go, the target block. And we really only need that because if I place it right here, it'll draw this redstone into it. And that will just make our stuff a little more compact because as soon as an item enters our system now, this redstone torch here will turn off, so we can build a timer based on that. And just like that, we have ourselves our hopper clock, running only as long as there are items in these. Got our stinky pistons in place, now we just need to wire them up to our timer. I need more space, I don't see anything. Wire it all up, make sure our hopper minecarts are all empty, and we should be good for a first test run. One stack of stone gets separated into... oh, oh. Oh, right, right, I forgot <laughs> the quick pulser. Where did these hopper my- they are in the block. Why are they in the- did I forget the- I did not. Why are you in the block? Quick pulser is installed whenever this timer goes. We want a very short tick so these open close so the minecarts can get the roost, be stuck in this position, then open close and they are sent on their way again and when they come in, we need these to be closed again. So let's see if this is what we have now. A stack of items going in. There we go, did you see it? They're in their position. They were, okay, this time is way too long, but that we can fix. Okay, okay. <laughs> Don't put blocks there. That'll get your minecarts stuck. Now, can we please test this? Minecarts are going in, very good. And they're going out, okay. Now I expect 16 items in each of these, 16. 16, zero and 32, what? Because I didn't push this guy over. I can't believe it. There's so much to the system. Final test. Now it will work. Minecarts go in. Getting the items out. Minecarts come out. And they're in their finishing position. 16. 16. 16. And 16. Perfect. Believe me, building this thing is really, really easy. If you remember the steps in which you have to build it. So yeah, yeah, maybe I should do a tutorial on this. <laughs> now it's pretty simple. I just have to, yeah, this is all I, I it took me to figure out the, mm. now I just have to figure out where I want my furnaces to be. Then we have to route the minecarts there. This should all be easy. Easy if you don't take into account all the crazy amount of resources we need for it. There's one of them being <laughs> powered. Rails. I asked in the chat if anyone had some and Luke was like, yeah, sure, come to the nether. We can make a deal. <laughs> and before I even could get to the nether, this is what I saw. It's amazing. All he wanted for it in return was this one poppy. So yeah, thank you very, very much, Luke. And thanks for uh, decorating my portal room, I guess. <laughs> that guy. Right here with this. I can continue building it. Oh my goodness, this. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. 64, like, like 128, two times 64 furnaces. I knew it was a lot of furnaces and I was okay with it being a lot of hoppers, but all the materials we need at the end of the day, that's it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it'll be fun. Thanks to this insanely great gift, the next phase of our project is done. The Minecraft delivery mine cards. The what? <laughs> the delivery mine cards are hooked up. 
And if I... Mm, let's hard trigger this system. Let's just imagine something is there. This should start it right. Right? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There they go. All four of them should be in there now. Yes, yes, yes. They imagine taking out things and there they go. They are in sync up. These ones, the outer ones, have a longer way to travel. We could try to compensate that by removing some power drills on the inner lines and they should all stop. Yes, and then they are in at the same time. This is important that we sync everything up. Now I have to work out the timings for them to take exactly one stake each out of this hopper minecart here. And for that I need to stop the whole thing and then do a lot of tedious testing. First test will be to see how many items they take out right now. So I'm gonna toss a bunch of stuff in there and we're just gonna see how many items will end up in each minecart once they are done loading. I think it will be too many and it is 17 too many. That's actually not bad. And are they all equal? Oh my goodness, this is so precise. I love it. Okay, now just to adjust the timing here. The last test was 61. Now let's see. I added one more tick. If we're lucky, this should work. I cannot make it any preciser. I don't see how. So this is the best we're gonna get. And it's... <laughs> a stack and one item. Actually, will that be a pro... Yeah, that will be a problem because they are bouncing back and forth. That means if we let it be like this, this furnace right here will always be fuller than all the others. Let me know if you have an idea of how I can improve this. I tried everything, replace this with an observer, oops, <laughs> I'm sorry, with an observer instead of the piston thing, because the piston thing only triggered every other cycle. But even with the piston thing, the best precision I could get was 64 and one. And the problem with that is that this one item will always land in the same furnace, I'm pretty sure. And that will mean we won't get an even distribution. I mean, I guess eventually the system will balance that out, or I don't like it though. And we need to intervene here. If I just let the video run like it is right now, we'll have an over two hours long video. I have so much footage, I've done so much. I built the takeout system for the whole machine. It'll work with droppers, throwing the items into a water stream where they will be funneled into a central chest. This works fine and dandy, but I also hooked up the fuel system, our kelp farm, and I realized that this is really not ideal with 128 furnaces running simultaneously. I need to burn 1152 kelp at once. Because each kelp block that starts burning needs to burn at least 9 kelp, else I will make a minus of kelp block. So I tried to build a crazy complicated kelp buffer that would fill up at least a double chest and that would then be released very quickly into the system trying to... It, 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 was, it was a crazy idea because I realized there is another fuel source that is way better, way easier to set up and way more efficient when it comes to many furnaces. Kelp blocks are great when you have few furnaces and a lot to burn, but if you have that many furnaces you need something that burns very quickly because most likely you will only run one furnace at a time and not multiple items in one furnace. So we are going with bamboo and yes that meant on top of everything else we are now building an AFK able automated bamboo farm as well. Admittedly, not the most comfortable pose for doing redstone, but hey, it worked. <laughs> it worked, so don't judge me on that one. After all this madness, I have finally come up with a solution that does not take up the entire room and still <laughs> works. Oh my goodness. This was painful. I haven't done redstone in a compact way for a long time, but this, uh, this should work fine and we can disguise it easily as well. I really hope, but what I also really, really hope is that this will work now. I will start the machine 
Then the flying machine should launch and as soon as it did, it should start the minecarts. Each of them should stop individually as soon as it has a load in it. That is at least what I'm struggling to, <laughs> to accomplish here so much. So there they go. Alrighty. And now each of them should stop because they have a load in them. They do. They do. We unload and there you see individually depending on how much load they have, they start running again. Oh my goodness, yes. We are pumping out items. We should pump them out fast. Yes, we do. It is noisy. That it definitely is. But it works. Oh my goodness. We will hook it up to our system back here, to our fuel detection system, because we do have a direct input line here telling us when we need fuel and when we don't. So whenever we need fuel, it'll be produced for us. And when we have enough, the machine will stop. I am so happy that this finally works. This also means this whole madness up there we will get rid of. We will remove all of this clutter here. We don't need it anymore. We will just take the kelp from our kelp farm to a storage area in this corner right here so we can kind of mirror the design that we will come up with over there and make the room look good. This makes me so happy. This makes me so very happy. It was such a struggle, I can't believe it. I shouldn't do these things when I am tired. I also put in a mechanism that will make the machine stop completely when this minecart is unloading. This is this right here. It overrides the signal down there and stops the flying machine. Just because if we have a lot of stuff being processed at the time, we don't need the flying machine running back and forth. That'll save a lot of stress for the server is what I wanted to say there. And a ton of stuff is flying out, but yeah, really Check, check, check out the rates of this thing. Just from the test run that I have done. <laughs> we aren't full yet. The super smelter isn't quite full, but if I just let this run, no problem whatsoever. You can see there's pretty much constantly a flow of bamboo into the system. It's, it's cra- Oh, I didn't re- Oh, I didn't re- Right, so this thing is- Still backlogging this system, of course it would. I haven't optimized this at all. I just threw it together. So much to do. But now I actually want to check how much time I have spent on this episode already. My plan originally was to get at least a rough room design going. And you can see that I started cleaning up. So you can see kind of the shapes we will go with the room. I'm not sure if this will be a lookout platform so you can see the whole machine working or if we have a lava pool here. Maybe a mixture of both. Oh, a mixture of both. But I think it should be super cool standing up here, seeing the furnaces light up and turning off again. Our collection area will be down there. Cluttered. It's super... Mm, mm. Let me check the time. Then we can see how much time we have left for today and what we can accomplish. Still, we accomplished so much already. It's crazy. I love it. Oh my goodness. I did not realize we have done this much already. Mostly time-wise. I have like four hours of recorded footage that I have to burn down into one episode. So yeah, this is sadly where we will leave this room. I've done the outlines. This is how it will look. We will have slab stair, no not stair, slab block, slab block, slab block. So we'll go down in a slower slope. Down here we will have like a little pit with our collection area. And in order to put stuff into the smelter, we'll have to go up here and we will do that right just in a second, just in a second. But I thought I'd give you a look around of the room, how it will feel. We will use a lot of dark stone and make it look really, really fantastic in the next episode though. What we will do today is run the smelter. I will need a bunch of smelted stone. I forgot how this is called. Let's just take eight full stacks, toss them into the machine. Oh, wait a second. I disabled the machine. I need redstone. Get it in there. Are things happening? There it goes. There it goes. Oh. Boy, they are running. We should have some of these, yes, fueled with bamboo already. Look at the bamboo, how quickly this goes down. Oh, yes, items are coming in. We should actually see them flowing here. Yes, we do. Oh, this is amazing. I should even be able to open this and we should still see items flowing in. Well, I guess they're going too quickly. Yeah, are they going? Are they? Yes, 
they are arriving in here at hopper speed so <laughs> we basically maxed out the speed already you aren't going because because you're empty wow oh you're only going because you're still running on the right kelp i get it this is all looking very very good <gasps> what about you oh hey you're running too this is perfect perfect and only one side of it is running because the other is still fueled so this works we still have a ton of fuel in backlog so the <laughs> bamboo farm won't be running for a while how quickly have you you're done you're what are you really done you're or what the, I, I, I'll, I'll have to check in in post how long that was wait is it done done it is we are just waiting for the items to be delivered through the hoppers what <laughs> I have to check and post how quick that was. Eight stacks. Eight full stacks. Cook down and insert time here. Right, right, right. All in all, uh, this machine is working so very fine. And we learned a lot. Kelp is great if you fuel a small amount of furnaces. But with a large amount like this, with a crazy amount of furnaces, you need something like bamboo, else you just waste a lot of your fuel with the... Yeah, you, you saw it there, the cup was still burning and nothing was in the furnace. So yeah, the bamboo will help us out greatly. In the next episode, we will make this room look fantastic and we will most likely work on a disguise, not a disguise, on making our bamboo farm look fantastic as well. But with this, we will be out for today, I really hope. You enjoyed the episode, it was most likely quite a bit derpy, I hope I can make it look good. In post I have so many clips of so many different tries of me trying to, well, do things, explaining and uh, uh, if you still enjoyed the episode and you want to help out the channel, you can hit the like button down below and if you want to see more silly content like this, you can hit the subscribe button. This was your personal virus and I hope I will see you in the next one. This is not what I wanted to do. Give it back. And we do want to place power rails there like a so. Oh, oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Well, we actually do, but I think that this guy was placed there too early. So power rail here and there. I promise I know what I'm doing. Power rail here and uh, there. My, my dear, oh my dearest fire! Oh my, you, <laughs> you can't see my face like that. Oh my, you, you, you shouldn't have, is what I wanted to say. Then we will start a timer that'll hopefully allow is. Then we will start a timer. Then we will start a timer that'll hopefully allow exactly 64 items to pass from Mannheim. Wow. They are funneled down through hoppers into this chest, which is once again hooked up to a minecart, hopper minecart collection system. No, what's it? So far now hiccups either, the only thing that could go really badly is these being open just when a minecart arrives and therefore let it in. Let it in. <laughs> Too soon, can you tell? <laughs> that I've been playing for way, way too long already. Only then, only when these are full and we have a lot of buffer and... Only then, only when these are full and we have... Only then... My goodness! Only then, <laughs> only when these are full and have a loot... <laughs> loot buffer yet, come on! Only then, <laughs> voice. Only then, only then. <laughs> this is not a difficult sentence to say. <laughs> no, I got a laugh. In the next episode, we will make this look room look. <coughs> no, 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 no. Me, 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 me. No, 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 no. Me, me, me. Oh. No, no, no. Oh. No, no, no. Oh. No, no, no. Oh. No, no, no.
Oh, we're 